On this week's episode, I'm joined by Emilianu Gitiedes. Emilianu is a CEO and a co-founder. He's lived all over the world. At the time of recording, Emiliano was in Italy, but Portugal has been his home for the last two years. We discuss, amongst other things, the startup and tech ecosystem in Portugal, what makes Portugal different to a lot of the other places he's lived in the world, the amazing work he's doing with, with Jaiz Vertical Farms, but mostly we speak about why Emiliano enjoys living the simple life in Portugal. It's good weather, good food, architecture, lookout points, surf, and amazing people. For those of you listening, head over to our YouTube channel to watch some of this episode. And for those of you watching, click down below and subscribe. And for the full podcast episode, go over to Stitcher, Google, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now over to my conversation with Emiliano. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Portugal, The Simple Life. And uh, I'm delighted to be joined here by Emiliano Gutierrez. Thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks to you. Pleasure to be here. Emiliano, why don't you start off telling us a little bit about you? Cool, sure. So I'm um, Emiliano, born and raised in, in Tijuana, actually. It's border California. Okay. Uh, so Mexico, and that, that I think yeah, belongs to my to my personality and also to my being in terms of like a bit of bicultural angle. I've been uh, yeah, traveling and, and working in different parts of the world, including, uh, yeah, Italy, Australia, the U.S., um, Austria, and and uh, now most proudly and and enjoying uh, Portugal, right? So yeah, I'm I'm a traveler. I'm I'm a founder. So I, I like to create things. And right now, like build uh, companies or build the company we're we're launching right now. We'll, we'll get into it. Uh, in terms of what I like to do, um, I really enjoy languages and speaking. You know, right now, yeah, we'll get into Portuño, which you know is a mix between Portuguese and, and Spanish, um, but uh, also yeah, German, Italian, etc. And wow. surfing, which is also like something we'll we'll get into. I hope uh, about Portugal and and what what uh, the huge possibilities it brings in terms of surfing. Uh, a bit of music, play a bit of sax um oh. yeah so that, that's a bit about myself uh, happy to go deeper into awesome. any of those areas awesome. mm -hmm. and i always say to people look uh, you don't need to speak english in, in portugal everybody is pretty open and, and they don't get annoyed with you or anything but um you do experience the country in a different way when you can mix it up a little bit with the language uh what has been your experience there totally no i agree i mean in terms of needing um to speak for example portuguese i think surprisingly it's a country where people speak really good English, right? So both, uh, of course, most in, in Lisbon and the big cities or even Porto, but uh, the whole country, uh, you see quite a bit of uh, literacy and also like English domain. So that's that's good, but definitely I think everyone appreciates if, if you do a bit of effort and then you get, of course, a bit more into the culture. I, I would always encourage people to learn a bit beforehand and then just just go, you know? Uh, <laughs> Can go with the flow and people are kind and like happy to help i mean you've, you've been here for i think you told me it's about two years um or just under uh was that your is this been your first experience of portugal or did you experience portugal before and visit portugal before after getting to know a good friend of mine who was actually studying at my university in mexico city um we we got to know there and he was like speaking highly of, of portugal and lisbon about about the bohemian angle but also the, the good food and the different kinds of, of the culture and everything and it was a, i think six years ago it was still uh up and coming right right now i think it's it's well much uh more well known so uh, back then it was a bit more mystical i don't know it was <laughs> like uh the upcoming barcelona so yeah, I got I got really interested in the music and the culture and the food, and I got here and it was just overblown, right? It was like all the way from from all that, but also the nature and 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 the liveness of the people. So yeah, that was my first experience six years ago, and mm. then I decided to to launch the company here, uh, which is okay. a whole other story. But uh, yeah, that was my first grasp of it, and it was very positive. What were some of those things that are, that you know that attracted you and kind of convinced you that this could be a place to to call home, um, even if if temporarily? 
Yeah, so a couple of them, including the the quality of life, meaning on, on, on my end, you know, the, um, of course, the food, but also the, the security, right? The, the, the safety of, of the streets of the city, um, the cultural elements. So both in terms of having international people but also like the 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 deep cultural roots that that portugal has their his, history etc but i'm doing a lisbon at the moment no but um all the the possibilities it has um all the miradoras so yeah the scenery i would say was also something very important um i mean what do you think um emiliano in terms of when you compare portugal to just from a lifestyle point of view, point of view and as a, just as a, as a normal guy who wants to live in a nice place, um, what, what, what do you think has been unique about Portugal in, in your experience when you compare it to all of these other places that you've been? I was living in Vienna when, I, when it was the number, I think it was the number one most livable city in the world. Um, and then I went to Melbourne. It was the number two, I believe. I still prefer Lisbon, you know, it was, and Lisbon wasn't even on the top 10 list but, or something like that. Like, yeah, it was like top something, but Lisbon had that, I don't know, special charm, both in terms of the infrastructure, maybe it didn't have as much of um, economical development yet as Vienna or Melbourne in that case, but I don't know, it was way more alive. You have a lot of street art, which I appreciate a lot. You have this stunning miradoros that you can't quantify you know the views the sunset yeah. Uh, yeah, i don't know I, uh, also as uh <laughs> maybe now a bit less but uh, i i do consider myself a bit of a bohemian so like just being able to be there with the people and going to see fado or randomly jam some jazz with people on the street so that, that's something that you can't find anywhere else to be honest so that's also that i also appreciate it a lot Tell us, um, Emiliano, a little bit about the work that you're doing at the moment. Um, this is how we found each other on LinkedIn. Uh, mm. You guys are developing a really interesting project. Um, tell us a bit about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we are growing raiz, which actually in Portuguese and in Spanish means means root, um, and we see it as as the roots of of a new food system. Um, what we do is um, a hybrid model of vertical farming. Uh, which means that we grow in a controlled environment using like vertical um, infrastructure hydroponics, but we do it in a way that leverages both natural light and LEDs instead of only fully uh, closed environment, which uh, spends quite a bit of energy. And we also have our own photovoltaics, so solar panels, and, and that's the way we'll scale up with our own microgrids. Um, and the vision there is to have a network of um, climate resilient, climate positive, hopefully vertical farms spread throughout the world that allow us to grow food with less resources in a beautiful way. I, I was speaking to somebody else about it on the podcast. So that we, we've had so many interesting guests on this podcast that are doing the, the startup world, but with social impact. Um, have you? I mean, have you found that in, in Portugal to be quite... Um, not unique because this is happening all over, but there's that aspect, there's this real drive in Portugal at the moment where, okay, we're doing startup, we're doing tech, uh, we're do, doing these interesting business ideas, but there's a social Im impact, which is just so beautiful and, and refreshing. Yes, hope uh, gladly and hopefully even more um, people are starting to to realize and to wake up that, that it's, it's something urgent, right? So we yeah. <laughs> We need more and more climate action and what we're doing. I mean, it's not a silver bullet or anything, but it's just like a step forward for, um, towards a, a cleaner, more resilient uh, ecosystem. So, yeah, um, hopefully we'll see more and more of, of those, um, both social and environmental um, uh, yeah, impact projects. Right. So, yeah, I think it's it's a, it's a wave uh, we can capture. It's also... Um, as as you might know, but there's also some really nice data backing up the fact that uh, climate action and, and and the transition is a huge uh, economical opportunity, right? So there's gonna be like yeah, very big businesses uh, built around uh, transitioning agriculture, um, energy, uh, transport. So it's an exciting time to also build them. So hopefully we'll yeah.
Uh, wow. But I mean, you've yeah. lived all over. You lived all over. You've you've experienced food. What do you what do you like about the food here? Yeah, so it's, I think it's very it's very straightforward and like mostly good quality. Uh, seafood is my my fave there. You know, uh, you know they ha they have this cervejerias or marisqueria. Um, so seafood is a big thing there. I would say the freshness of the food, uh, seafood is top. They, I've tried, I've reduced my my meat intake quite a bit, uh, gladly. But um, there are some really nice places there, and they have like a good culture as well. Um, yeah, if I would have to recommend some stuff, I'm happy to send the list afterwards. But I'm sure you know pretty good good restaurants. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so yes, I would say seafood. Really nice um, uh, toppings, right? So I, I I do like butter and garlic, so they use it quite a bit. So that's that's amazing. Yeah, if you like butter and garlic, you're in a good you're in a good place. If you like butter and garlic, yeah, <laughs> please do come. Um, yeah. If you're allergic it, to garlic, it's a problem. You can have a problem in Portugal. It's if you problem. don't like garlic, yeah, make sure to let the people know <laughs> because yeah. you can find it a lot. And um, there's this really nice uh, crab head zapatera, which is really oh, nice. Yeah. My wife yeah. loves that. That's amazing, no? So uh, yeah. I think very simple, right? I remember I, also here in Italy and Mexico, uh, we eat like in Mexico more than anything, a lot of sauces, a lot of like complexity. I think uh, Portugal is more straightforward. So it's not yeah, French. The, the ingredients do the talking. Yeah, exactly. Just boom, boom. That's it. But it's good quality. And and uh, that's what you, what, 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 is what you get, you know? <laughs> Going with the flow day-to-day -day life, what, what should people be looking for? Uh, you know the, the mindset going in there uh, just just going with the flow in Portugal in general it's it's a different pace it's a different way of things being done yeah what for sure like uh, I would say like being patient and expecting things maybe or not expecting but like knowing that things might go a bit chiller no it's it's a chiller place you know so always like maybe I don't know um sample I don't know someone coming from New York which which I love the New York uh <laughs> minute but um yeah just maybe switching that off if possible you know like it's gonna be chiller it's gonna be a bit slower but that has its magic too so just like yeah just taking a deep breath perhaps and just going out in the street and and taking it taking the time to uh to absorb uh the details and the people etc so yeah just taking it um taking it um one minute at a time and step by step so i think yeah Portugal and Lisbon do have that tranquility to it so like once you come here you'll you'll, ex you'll experience it for sure but it's definitely a nice feeling especially once once you get used to it and even perhaps even more in the beginning it's a it's a positive a shock uh, a positive welcoming right to the to the good life so yeah don't be afraid and just just do it Emiliano um a question that we ask all of our guests yeah Portugal the simple life why because of the weather <laughs> the architecture the way people are and the tranquility so yeah i would say those two including the nice beaches and the fact that it very well might be the end of the world at nazare and you have breathtaking views so yeah come and, and see for yourself yeah good one emilio emiliano thank you so much i've enjoyed this conversation uh thanks for being on the podcast thank you thanks it's a pleasure thank and you and i'm gonna let you call it that's a wrap cheers so thank you once again to our guest and thank you to all of you for listening please subscribe share with your friends give us a thumbs up and please leave a comment or a review we always love to hear from you don't forget, Portugal The Simple Life also has a magazine, so download it. It's for free. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And as we say in Portugal, Cesar's bem vindo. Welcome to The Simple Life. <laughs>